Hello everyone and welcome to my first official video uh, in in 2023. Uh, I'm uh, covering a game from 1973, that's why I uh, almost messed it up. Uh, but I decided to show a very nice game uh, played by 10-year-old uh, Gary Kasparov. Maybe he's even 9 here. The game was played some sometimes in 1973. Kasparov was born in 1963 on April 14th. And as I do not have the exact date of the game, maybe he was even 9. But okay, let's say he was 10. Uh, his opponent is Shorat Murat Kuliev. And we do not know much uh, about his opponent except uh, that he at some point became a FIDE master with some rating of 2300 and that uh, well uh, judging by this game he was a very strong player but as that's all we know uh, I'm wearing a hoodie hope you guys are and let's start the year off properly hope this game inspires you uh, the 10 year old Kasparov always inspires us as he was already a monster at that age uh, so uh, let's uh, let's check it out Kasparov has the white pieces and he opens with e4 we have e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 going for the Ruy Lopez we have a6 uh, Murat Kuliev goes for Morphy's defense bishop to a4 and knight to f6 now we have d4 and now just e captures on d4 this is the absolute main line you could also consider knight captures on e4 but that's um, even in those days that was fairly nicely analyzed let's say castles b5 bishop to b3 and d5 and the, sorry d5 and the white will just capture the pawn on e5 and okay the game continues but e captures on d4 is considered to be the more serious attempt at refuting this idea by white so e captures on d4 and now castles is is, uh, pretty much the only move they play today but Kasparov plays e5 very very tricky stuff knight to e4 and now Kasparov castles with bishop to e7 rook to e1 again waiting with the recapture of the d4 pawn knight to c5 attacking the bishop on a4 and now just bishop captures on c6 d captures and knight captures on d4 he wins back his pawn uh, Murat Kuliev castles knight to c3 and now knight to e6 offering a trade of knights if Kasparov of obliges then the bishop comes to e6 then black can also trade queens and black is very happy and there is only one serious attempt uh, at um, uh, playing for advantage here with white and Kasparov plays exactly that he plays knight to f5 which is very nice he goes for the g7 square the queen can come to g4 and the other um, uh, fun part about knight to f5 is that it prevents a queen trade if you trade queens then there's the uh, in between move knight captures an e7 check and after you recapture you're just up a full piece you've grabbed that bishop so what could you play here you could consider a move like uh, let's say bishop to g5 or you could even consider uh, s uh some other moves maybe you're gonna play knight to g5 it's uh it, it's still possible uh but then look at this knight captures on e7 uh this comes with check queen captures on f4 and already white uh gains many many tempi here knight e6 f5 and then uh, queen g4 and the bishop can come to g5 the knight can come to e4 uh this is a disaster for black so black plays bishop to g5 this is the absolute best way to play this and now uh, we have queen to g4. Now, if the bishop moves, then you might have some problems. Okay, the knight here still guards the g7 square, but you get the idea of why Kasparov put the queen on g4. And uh, it's not easy to meet this um, queen to g4 move. You could consider a move like h5 to get the queen away from the g7 pawn. You could consider a move like f6. You could consider a move like g6. It seems like it gets the job done. The problem is, look at this, knight to e4. White happily would sacrifice a piece here. And if g captures on f5, queen captures, you still don't have a good move now the bishop on g5 is hanging and it doesn't matter what you do if you bring the bishop back look at this knight f6 check bishop captures e captures and now you have all sorts of nasty ideas like just checkmating the black king okay the knight still guards g7 but you will just eliminate the knight at some point you also have to be careful you don't want to get uh, back rank made it so you will have to develop the bishop first uh, but pretty much um <coughs> uh incredibly difficult to defend for black there, there is a way like you could play queen to d4 and then after bishop to e3 queen to h4 and black still fights but it's not going to be easy so in the game knight to d4 was played and it is now as of move 13 that this position has never been reached again and uh, as you might imagine for very good reasons uh it's not uh 
Uh, it's not a very good move. Now, uh, he, he had ideas here, like if, if Kasparov trades queens, and of course, why would Kasparov do that? Like if queen captures on d4, bishop captures on f5, and now everything is nicely defended. The bishop is defended by the queen, the queen is defended by the bishop. Even if you try queen d8, just bishop captures on d8, and everything is perfectly fine. So instead, after knight to d4, Kasparov played bishop captures on g5. He attacked um, uh, Shorat's queen, and now bishop captures on f5. Shorat attacks uh, Gary's queen. Queen to g3, now you will really have to be careful of what you're doing now, there is no knight on e6 guarding the g7 square, and here queen to c8, getting the queen out of the bishop's way, also getting the queen out of the d file, because here Murat um, uh, Shorat was uh, afraid of rook to d1, uh, but in fact queen to d7 was the best move here. The, the point is that now after rook a to d1 you can play c5, and there is no good way to move the knight, play c3 and try and take advantage of this. Now uh, let's say knight to b1, you even lose this game. Knight to, <laughs> knight to e2 check, forks the king and the queen, you can't capture the queen because... Um, uh, sorry, you can't capture the knight because queen captures on d1 is checkmate, and if you move the king to f1 or h1, the knight will gobble up the queen, delivering check, and you will uh, win your opponent's queen. But after queen to c8, this is now a problem. Now black will have um, uh, problems bringing the rooks into the game, and it didn't really achieve all that much. Now rook a to d1 comes with tempo as the knight is hanging, and you can no longer play d5, uh, c5, now the queen no longer guards the d5 square, you allow knight to d5, and all sorts of uh, problems um, uh, appear out of nowhere. So here, knight captures on c2, uh, and in fact, th this is all uh, pretty much top uh, top engine moves from black, This is, uh, th those are not silly moves. Uh, rook to e2, and now queen to e6. Uh, it seems that black just uh, gobbled up a pawn and he's very happy with his position. But now bishop f6, Kasparov uh, threatens checkmate and you cannot play g6. If you play g6, queen g5 followed by queen h6, queen g7 is an unstoppable checkmate. So here bishop to g6 was played and it seems like black defended everything. He uh, doesn't really have a worry in the world, uh, but that's not really the case. Kasparov had something in mind. What is it? Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move that allows Kasparov to win the game uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, wonderful idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Bishop captures on G7. That's what uh, uh, Gary played. And now after King captures on G7, look at this, Rook captures on C2. Now the Bishop cannot move. And now uh, the material is equal. Okay, it's Knight against Bishop, but you have opened up the Black King's defenses and it will now be possible to attack the Black King. Rook A to D8, offering a trade of Rooks, but Kasparov just doubles up on the d file. Queen to e7, guarding on d8, and now h4, Kasparov is now threatening h5 to win the bishop. So king to h8, and now look at this spectacular move by Kasparov, queen to g5. And now you can't really uh, do nothing, uh, otherwise you're just going to lose the queen. You can't move the queen, otherwise uh, rook captures on d8, and everything is now going for that uh, d8 square. What you could do is trade on g5, but it's not uh, all that impressive. It, it is what happened in the game, uh, and it seems like you should be able to play it. You even double up uh, white's g pawn, but uh, look at what Kasparov had in mind. Captures, captures, and now rook captures on d2. Rook captures, and now, uh, okay, it seems like Kasparov is threatening rook to d7, so his opponent just stops that. And it seems like Black uh, solved all of his problems. Uh, he has a bishop against a knight on an open board. There's play on both sides of the board, so bishop should be a little bit better than the knight. And it seems that um, it, it will be Kasparov who will be struggling this uh, game. But uh, every position is unique, and this is one such unique position. Let's see how Kasparov plays it. Pawn to f4. His idea is he wants to play king f2, king f3, and push g4, f5, and completely box in the black king. Uh, problem is, uh, there is no good way to activate the black rook. You don't have access to d8, the, the rook is covering that, and this isn't really uh, achieving all that much. So king to g7, we have king to f2, now preparing, sorry about that, king f2, preparing king f3 and g4, and now h5. It's the only good way to seek counterplay, and again, it is the top move recommended by the engine. So Kasparov uh, now really should capture Alpassan, because now f3 and g4 will be met with just h captures and g4, nothing spectacular here. So okay, g captures on h6 uh, with check, king captures, and now king f3, preparing g4, but now he stops it, rook to g8, and at least the black 
black rook gets some activity uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, on f8, it really wasn't doing all that much. But now look at this, knight to e4. Uh, Kasparov just shows that black is without a single move. The problem is, even if you trade here, let's say captures, captures, and okay, it's a rook end game with equal, equal material, uh, still, uh, white is just completely winning. There's nothing you can do. Even rook g3, which seems like it gains some activity, rook d7. And now if king to g6, guarding the pawn here, just f5 with check. And the, what do you play here? King to g5, rook captures on f7. And white gets two connected pass pawns, completely winning. And uh, if you try this, then e6. And again, you will lose the f7 pawn. So there's no way to activate your pieces in any possible way. So here, bishop to g4 was played. We have king to e3, and now king to g6. And here, uh, uh, Kasparov was basically completely winning once he even entered the end game. That's how powerful Kasparov's position was. Uh, but here, his opponent kind of uh, steals his glory. Uh, he plays king to g6, and Kasparov ends the game with knight to f6, uh, just uh, forking the, the rook and the bishop. And if you want... Uh, uh, you know, achieve uh, anything, you will have to play something like, well, th there's really nothing to play. I mean, it's, uh, you, you will uh, suffer severe material loss. Uh, but even if he, his opponent continue, uh, continue defending in the absolute best possible way, let's say bishop to e6, uh, look at how easily Kasparov can win the game. Knight to f6 now takes away even more squares from the black rook. Uh, you have to move the rook somewhere, let's say rook g3, not a problem. King f2, and look at this, the rook has no squares on the, on the third rank. The rook has to go back and it doesn't mer uh, matter where you go to this is covered by the knight this is covered by the pawn you can go to g6 but now look at this rook to d8 and all of the squares here are covered and there is no good defense against rook to h8 or basically uh, g4 and then rook to h8 that's pretty much it whatever black plays here let's say you grab a pawn because there's nothing uh, g4 and now black can either give up the, the rook for knight and try to suffer for the rest of the game, or you would see something like, let's say, bishop e6, rook to h8, check, king to g7, rook to g8, check, king to h6, and pawn to g5, leaving black with only one option, rook captures, and then uh, f captures on g5, and this would result in checkmate. So absolutely spectacular game by the 10 or maybe even 9-year-old um, uh, Gary Kasparov. Uh, he completely outplays his opponent, and after a couple of, uh, not, not bad moves, a couple of weaker moves, uh, he, he finds this bishop, to, sorry, not this, bishop captures on g7 move, which opens up the black king just a little bit, and then he doesn't even win the game by uh, some sort of uh, checkmating attack, but rather he finds this spectacular queen to g5 move, which forces uh, just a, a brilliant, brilliant uh, end game for him. So uh, at 10 years old, it really, it, you know, it really makes you wonder <laughs> about your own uh, chess uh, ability, at least uh, it, it, it does for me, but this is, I mean, absolutely spectacular. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and that uh, you uh, started the year well. I thought this would be a nice game at the kick of the, the, the year 2023. So hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Michael Hoff Consulting, uh, Adam Holt, James Maybury, uh, Matze Bogdanski and Deepak Gangatharan for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and everything that happens uh, in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.